Well, my dudes, I have been waiting for this episode since the start of the save. It's transfer special time. Let's go ahead and get into it. Before we get into today's episode, why don't you go ahead and leave a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment down below. Well, it's that time. It's in the season review, transfer special, and guys, I have been looking forward to this one for a long time, and it means probably going to have a late night recording this one, and it should be a fun time. If you missed it in the last episode, we actually clinched the league, winning the title, and there it is on our season review. Let's get ahead in the new arrivals. Excited to see what the board says about what we've done. And let's go ahead and take a look. Timo Bornman, uh, the club loved this signing. I love this signing. Uh, great player for us. 21 goals this season. Uh, Lucho comes in A-plus on that one as well. Uh, Soonjins, apparently they didn't really care. Uh, Chavi was our signing of the season. Came in midway through. Uh, the board gives it a C overall on that one. Bellinos, don't care. I mean, none of these guys are going to care about, are they? Cromore, A-minus on that one. Uh, one of my signings, 9.2 on that one that we signed for a free Good news there. Yeah, I'm going to guess that we're not going to see any of these guys. So the signings that I brought in, they liked pretty well. One of them was a C, but he was the signing of the season. So good news there. Uh, we've, we've done really good this season. Had a great, great season. Uh, went in the league. Apparently, they was happy with a B-. minus. I mean, you know, we just didn't dominate the league. You know, look at the goal differential board. Uh, okay. I, I can understand the Dutch Cup being a little bit disappointed, but, I mean, guys, we <laughs> – we had a good turnout there in the first two matches. We had a little bit of a letdown in the third one, but I understand this. It is what it is. We don't care about this. The financials, everything goes up because there's nothing there. Uh, Soonjins was our top selling kit. Hey, followed by Antonio, Roy, and Velenos. Yeah, I mean, I think you would throw Chavi in there if he would have been at the start of the season, but it is what it is. And there's the way we lined up for the majority of the season. Uh, we had a tactical change midway through. We didn't really use this any further. Uh, Bornemann and Sintgens, those two guys need to swap. I'm happy with the attack right here. Uh, midfield, yeah, I mean, I guess you could say that. Uh, yeah. I don't argue with the players that's out there. That would be the players that I would probably select myself for the whole season. I think I think Chavi should be in there, but uh, obviously with him coming midway through, he's not going to be there. Uh, fans player of the season was Borman. Young player of the season was Borman. Signing of the season was Chavi. And goal of the season went to Lucho. Top goal scorer was Suntjens. Most assist was Hay. Uh, player of the match awards was Suntjens. Highest average rating was Borman. Most passes completed per 90 minutes was Velenos. Uh, had a couple rec records that got broke this season. Suntjens with most goals by a player in a match. Uh, also, in a league match, I'm guessing that was the same match. He had the most assists by a player in a season. Ology with the most shutouts. Sungjins with the most player of the match awards. And worst discipline was Rutan, the naughty boy. He was a very up and down player, wasn't he? We didn't win any competition awards, which, I mean, we was only in one competition that we got knocked out in the third round. So, good news there. Hey, season review is over. Hope you enjoyed it. I, I know I did. And, and, hey, guys, this is something I'm so excited about. I always hate end of season reviews and transfer specials. Only one thing. One thing I don't like about it is typically the board uh, sets the budgets like two days after the season review, and we have to come back really quickly. But not this time. It's on this day. Let's go ahead and see what we have. Uh, Three point one four million for the payroll, and the transfer budget is pretty low. Uh, I was really hoping that transfer budget would be a lot higher than that. I mean, the payroll skyrocketed, didn't it? We just don't have a ton of money to spend on players. Okay, so that puts a little bit of a damper on what we was hoping to do this off season. I know we can move some money around to bring in some guys, but that really, really doesn't help us out at all, does it? I mean, 748000 I was hoping that we would... That one's that's gonna be tough. I'm I'm disappointed in that. Uh, we we need we need about more than that. Uh, so this is what they want us to do next season. They want us to play defensively solid football, make the most set pieces, play counterattacking football, which I think we're gonna have to to to, uh, to uh, stay up. And yeah, they're kind of in the same boat I am. They think we're gonna go to the relegation playoff where we'll play the team in the division that we're in right now. Uh, to see who stays up or who goes up. 
And and I agree with that for the most part. And then they just want us to attempt. Like these first couple of years, guys, it's it's really going to be a struggle. And we've got to do our part. But the good news is, Almere City is going up. So there's a team that I feel like we can beat, right? We've we've beat them in the past. We drew against them, uh, depending on how good of a transfer, you know, transfer special they have, I guess, or transfer window they have. We figure that one out. And I'm not sure if we've actually figured out who this third place team was. We haven't yet. So whoever, you know, one of these teams will win, obviously, and play uh, whoever in the top flight, uh, Camber, who is a team that recently got called up. They won the season, the league last year. So let's say that they go down. We have another team that we're able to beat. I mean, go ahead, Eagles. I think, I think we have a chance to beat them, but we're going to be right around this thirteenth to eighteenth next team. I know that's a pretty big, pretty big guess, but uh, I really think we're going to be clear of these two teams right here, especially if one of our teams get promoted. I think that's the case that we look for. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and accept this. We're good with that. Squad dynamics, we we don't really care about. End of team season, end of season team meeting. I'll do that off screen. And there we go. There is what we have. Guys, I've got a lot of work to do. Uh, not a lot of money to do it with. I was hoping that we could bring in some players, but unfortunately it doesn't look like we're going to bring in a ton. I wanted to go ahead and show you what we've done in between episodes since we did have two matches. We played a very – hey, guys, this was the most rotated we've played since joining this club. We draw nil-nil here, uh, then a one-nil victory here with Azagar getting a goal. But I called up a player – it's been really, really lighting it up through training. And, guys, I like this kid a lot. Uh, Jaden Mendez Delgado. He's a two-star player, four-and-a-half-star potential center back. And he's been freaking killing it. Like, his performances in training, his performances in the matches. Been really impressed with this guy. I have, like, to the point where between him and Winsink, I don't know who uh, stays as our fourth-choice center back on the team. Put out a 7.35 over his previous two i think one of these guys gets loaned out this season between wells winsink and delgado between the two i don't know uh delgado or winsink does have a little bit more potential apparently but delgado's just got the performances behind him so uh that that was fun i, I really enjoyed that we've got some stuff we got to do though and i and i don't know we've got to sell some players that is for sure uh to even justify some of the stuff that we can do and I think it starts with Mr. Danny Baker. His salary is just it's a bit much, isn't it? At 133000 per year. That is how much? 7% of our salary. I don't, I don't see that. I really don't in a player like him. Maybe we could sell him for top-end money. We can get a little bit and we can start reevaluating some of these players. He's a good player, but I, I just, I don't know. Dion Malone, another player that's a three-star potential guy that's 33 years old. He's not going to get any better, is he? He's just going to get worse. Uh, he's got one year left on his contract, I know for sure. I mean, we're not going to get anything out of him. That is for sure. He's, he's, he's not. It's one of those type of players, like, it's just better to keep him on the side and just use him because you're not going to get anything for him. Bilotti, we're letting go. Rooten. I haven't been impressed with him, to be honest with you guys. Just not a huge fan of him. So uh, I don't know the players that we sell. I really don't. Uh, Rooten is a Dutch-born player, so I do like that about him. But just hasn't been able to perform for us. Antonio, a three-star player, three-star potential that's 31 years old. We might try selling him. A lot of these guys I just don't know what to do with, really. Uh, Roy, I love. I think he's going to be a really good player for us, be a starter for us next season. Mishart. He is a two-star player, four-star potential. I think we need to upgrade that left-back position. Position. Lucho's coming back to the club. Bornman coming back to the club. Azagari uh, probably needs to drop down to the B team. Need to replace him. Uh, Quincy, I don't plan on re-signing Quincy. Uh, never really got going for us, and I'm going to go ahead and set for a release. I just don't see him playing for us. Uh, Kosai going down, back down to the B team. Coates would be going back down to the B team. This guy probably needs to go back down to the B team, but he's a backup goal keep for us. Winsink probably needs to or get loaned out. Cromar probably needs to as well. And Delgado needs to or get loaned out. But Delgado had some really good performances. But we are going to go ahead and start dropping some of these guys back down to the B team. So Silva, 
sorry, bud, you're going back to the reserve team. This will give us a little bit more of uh, indication of what we've got. Josiah was not good this season, so he's going to go back down there. See ya. Coats of B. Uh, very inconsistent. Picked up injuries this season. Going back down to the B team. See ya. And I don't want to do it because Cromar was decent at times this year, but he was also bad at times. See ya. Back down to the B team. So this is what we're left with. Uh, and kind of. We're losing Rosler, as you guys know, at the end of the season um, or at the end of his contract. But... I don't know on some of these guys. Some of these guys, I just don't, I don't believe them. I really don't. Like Antonio, I, I would theoretically love to get rid of these old guys between Soonjins, Malone, Antonio, and start getting what we need done. Uh, I think I think the main thing we focus off this focus on this offseason is re-signing Chavi. We've got to get Chavi re-signed. And then the defense. We've got to, we've got to solve our back four. We really do. We've got to get another center back, I feel like. Uh, I feel we need to get another left back and another right back that are all starters. And obviously, I think with the salary that we got or the the, pay, the transfer budget that we got, we're going to have to bring in another loan player at one of those positions if we definitely want to get a locked-in starter. Just don't know who it's going to be. And it's time to ask, let's see, can we can we ask, where is it? I'm, I'm, I'm struggling for a senior affiliate. The board never wants to give a senior affiliate. Okay, uh, the financial stuff. It'll work. Uh, this is so frustrating. They just refuse to give a, a, a senior affiliate. And I really want a senior affiliate with this club, and, and we just haven't been able to. Still, third try, no luck there on the senior affiliate, unfortunately for us. And, uh, yeah, I guess we'll be back when some stuff happens. Tell you what, this has been difficult with the small amount of transfer budget that we have. We haven't done a whole lot, unfortunately. Uh, we have brought in one player so far, and that is Tom Kalugin. Uh He's a left-wing option, can play on the right-hand side, kind of a squad-level player for us. Uh, I'm expecting Roy to play on the left-hand side and Antonio to play on the right-hand side for most of the matches. It may swap up a little bit with uh, Kestens on the left-hand side and this guy as well, and, and Roy on the right-hand side. Just depends on how Antonio plays. But saying that, it's been difficult. But good news is I've brought a lot of players on trial that can help out the squad. And uh, I want to go ahead and show you the guys that I have placed bids on. Now, these guys are not going to light the world on fire, but they do bring some solid depth to the team and some potential ability. So up first, we have offered it to Jari Sherman, uh, a three-star player, three-and-a-half-star potential uh, attacking player. Probably be a backup number 10 to Chavi is what I'm thinking. Looks like a solid player. Nothing fantastic, but maybe can help us stay up. So we've offered him a contract. We've offered out this contract to Joey Howling, a two and a half star player, three and a half star potential goalkeep uh, to be our backup goalkeep. Really, that's the only reason why we're offering him one. Uh, we've offered a contract to Lee on Miguel. We brought him on trial. He's a two and a half star player, four star potential right back that can play center back for us. Uh, I like him pretty well. Uh, we're taking a little bit of a risk with him because I think he's more of a three star potential player. But once again, it's depth for us. We need that in this team this season because we didn't have a lot of it last season, unfortunately. And then this is the guy that I'm actually excited about. Uh, We've offered him a contract. He's a center back that can play left back, a two-and-a-half star player, five-star potential. Looks really solid, and I have tried to loan one player in. I haven't heard back. I don't think we're going to get it done. He was loaned out last season uh, in the division that we was in, but this guy would be a game-changer for us on that right-hand side. Uh, they're a little bit reluctant to send him out on loan, so hopefully we get that one done. Uh, I, I just, I don't know, guys. The preseason has started. We haven't started playing our friendlies yet. Honestly, it doesn't look like this season has rolled over. So it's kind of weird how it's going because I've been waiting for us to get that jump. Like, hey, we are in the air divisi. We're not in the second tier. And unfortunately, it just hasn't happened. But yeah, we, we've we've battled off some staffing stuff as well that's left us a little bit thin. We need to get some more scouts in. I thought I had placed this out and we haven't received any yet uh the coaching staff i need to do some work on that because we lost some of those guys as well so uh it's it's been a little bit tough i don't know where we want to go with the coaching team so let's just take a look so we've got one goalkeeping coach we've just got one coach so we definitely need to get a coach and that is for certain i don't mind that how is our fitness so i think a coach 
And I think another goalkeeping coach would help us out the most on that end. But uh, I'm, I'm excited about what we're trying to do. We've, we've brought some guys in on trial, as I mentioned. I want to see if there's anybody that's like the under age of 18 that was you know, a prospect from another nation that we could potentially bring in on trial for building up our reserve team a little bit. I don't expect a lot to get done in terms of players that are going to immediately impact the side. You know, uh, it's, it's going to be tough. I am looking at a left back to help out because I do feel that is the biggest need that we have. And if we can get that lone player in, right back is solved, my dudes. Well, a few more signings later, and I think we've done pretty good business since then. Uh, we've brought in a new left back. I think we'll probably be our starting left back just because of his potential. Uh, he's a two-and-a-half star player, five-star potential. Looks pretty solid. I mean, he's not great. Don't get me wrong. He's not. But he's solid, right? So he's going to be playing left back for us. He's a very attacking guy, so I do like that. Uh, we purchased him from Feyenoord for 240k. Uh, I think it's pretty good business. Hartman now on the squad. Up next, this is a player that I'm actually really excited about. I think this has been the best signing we've done so far. And Luca Everink uh, for 375,000. Uh, right back option, another attacking right back. Uh, our right backs are. are our fullbacks, they are going to be very attacking, guys. This guy's a three-star potential, five, or I'm sorry, he's three-star current ability, five-star potential ability. Uh, and as, as I said, he's good going forward. Uh, looks to be pretty good. We purchased him for 375000 As I mentioned, uh, looks pretty good. Played a couple matches last year in the area of 15 matches, uh, 6.8 average rating for him. So uh, I think he's going to be a pretty solid player. Excited about him. A lot of the guys that we also offered contracts to on freeze didn't come to us. So now we're doing some other stuff, trying to bring in some other guys. Another right back, it looks like we're trying to bring in a center back and then a right wing that's on an amateur contract right now. I'm not going to go over those guys because if they sign with us, I want to go over them. But uh, one player that I am really interested in signing, and I just don't see how in hell's blazes we're going to be able to pull this off. Uh, I think he's this guy up here. I think he plays as a striker. Uh, where are you, sir? It's this guy? No, it's not that guy. Where where are you? I know you I know we've scouted him. Why is he not showing up in the scouted players? Uh oh, that's why. Just go ahead and do that. Uh he is Dutch, so we'll go ahead and scout uh filter for that as well. And that's Joshua Xerxy. Guys, I would love to sign this guy. I really, really would. He could be great for us. I mean Four and a half star player already, four and a half star potential. I don't know if we'll be able to get it done, but we would certainly try if, it, if, if our team allowed. And his salary is just massive. It sucks because this guy would be so damn good for us. But unfortunately, with that type of salary, I just I don't see it happening. I would like to bring in another striker. Uh, and the reason for that is... Because the only guys we really have that I trust is Bornman and Soonjins. And Soonjins is getting up there in age. Uh, this is a guy that we potentially could bring in as an advanced forward. That's it's okay. Uh, he would prefer to play on the right-hand side. But that being said, he could play up top. It would add a little bit of versatility on Jules Warts. Uh, I just don't know. I don't know. This guy right here that I'm trying to sign, he is a, he's, he's okay as well. Uh, if you remember Jizz... <laughs> that's a name uh horn camp three-star player three and a half star potential guy that uh we we tried purchasing early on he's another option but he just doesn't fit our playing style really because I, I would prefer not to go too up top but another option there uh it, it's kind of tough because we're running out of options and i feel like we need another striker but unfortunately for us just haven't found one and it's it's a bit disappointing Looking at the guys we've scouted, it's just this right here is what's holding us back. We just can't find anybody that we can actually purchase. This guy right here, though, I would I would love to sign him. I just don't see how it's possible that we could potentially even come close to signing a player of this caliber and with that salary. But, man, he looks so good. He'd be a game changer for us, wouldn't he? I don't know. I would really, really like to bring this kid in. Uh, what would be the... Okay, so they would want us to pay 100% of his wages, and we can't, we can't do that. That's, that's a bit too much, and he's wanting a bit too much to come to the club. So definitely going to keep looking for another striker. I think that's another need. 
I feel okay with what we're doing with the back four. We've brought in right back options. We've brought in left back options. That lets Dion Malone move over from the right back and play as a center back for most matches. Uh, that being said, I would like to bring in another player. That way we're not relying on, uh, what's his name? It ain't Hillsink. It's something similar to that, though. Um, Winsink and Delgado. I'd prefer not to rely on them as my third choice. I would really like those guys to be my fourth choice center backs. And that being said, it's it's... It's a bit tough. It really is. It's the money situation. It's really tough. But good news is we've climbed up the season preview a little bit. Look at that. Now we're sitting in 15th place right outside of relegation. I don't see us climbing above that, but we can certainly try, can't we? Well, another batch of signings are in, and I'm quite excited about some of these guys. I think they're actually going to be first team players the first year. And, uh, potentially further along. I think we've actually got some guys that might be decent here. Uh, up first, we got Stan Van Dyke. Uh, he's a two and a half star player, four star potential center back option. Uh, he's a big lad. He's got good jumping reach. He's good at heading. He's good at marketing, and good at tackling. I mean, he's not very aggressive, but he makes good decisions. I mean, I feel like he's a solid player for this level for us, and he's definitely going to help out. You can see him in the starting 11 on a good deal of matches. Uh, Nathan Marcolo, uh, a right back option that we've signed that can play as a defensive mid as well, as, as well as a center mid even. Uh, but he's a going forward guy. He's a two and a half star player, four and a half star potential at 23 years old. Obviously he hasn't lived up to that hype. Maybe we can bring it out of him. He's got good work rate, good determination, his speed. He's got speed for days. His pace, good pace, looks really good. Formerly of PSV and Hoven. Played a lot last year in the division that we played in. Uh, good to give him a bump in play in time and, and competition. I think he's going to be very good. And then we got Van Der Heiden, I guess. We got him from Grafschap, uh, a two-and-a-half star player, five-star potential. Uh, says he's a striker, but I don't know where we actually want to play this guy because uh, we, we're kind of playing with a pressing forward at this point. He's got good strength. The only thing I don't really like about him is his technical ability. I think you might actually see him being a third choice striker for us. I think I lean more toward him being a two and a half star just because he's got really good physicals and I think he's going to be pretty good. Um, his work rate, I wish was a little bit higher. His determination, I wish it was just, just a little bit more, but it's, it's pretty good. I'm happy with it, honestly, now that I'm looking at it. I think he's going to be a solid player that can do some stuff for us. He's, he's had some quality to the side. He adds some uh, depth to the right wing. And like I said, uh, I think we will see him in some of these matches especially with teams that are a little bit lower. I think he's going to be a pretty good player. Uh, says that potential Eredivisie standard. So that would be freaking awesome. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what he can bring to the club. I think he can help us out. Uh, I am scouting some more players. Uh, you can kind of tell what I'm looking for. I'm looking for another striker or number 10. And I just haven't been lucky, man. Uh, this guy we might bring in on the lawn as a number 10. I wish he could play up top as well, though, because it'd be nice. He's a three-star player, five-star potential. We do have one more loan to give out, so that's why we're looking at that. Giovanni here, uh, a three-star player, five-star potential from Ajax that we could bring in on the lawn. Potentially, we could even sign him if we wanted to, but I'm just not 100% sold on him yet. I'm trying to find an actual striker that I feel comfortable playing, and then uh, I'm scouting this guy as well. Uh, he's playing for Graf Schapp as well, so... Um, could be somebody for us that could be a, a, another number in, or number nine for us that I think would work out. But I, I don't know. The squad's getting decent sized right now. And you can see we got a couple guys that are marked ready for the reserves, like uh, Delgado. He's going to be playing on the reserve team as well. But I want him on the first team so I can keep a check on him. Uh, Winsink is the same way. I've called up Kevin Silva to add a little bit more depth. And uh, he's ready for the reserve team as well. But Guys, I think we're looking okay right now. Uh, now that we've made the new signings, have, have the odds changed any more? I doubt it. Yeah, I didn't think they would, but these, I mean, these three teams right here, us, Almere City, and Go Ahead Eagles, we got it tough. We really do. We're going to be battling each other, and hopefully, just hopefully, we're the one that gets ahead of the rest of them, and we stay up this year. Uh, the club wants us to at least be 16th in the league, so... They don't want us to be an automatic relegation. They want us to at least fight against it in that playoff if it comes down to that. But I'm hoping that we can reach this 15th spot. Do we? I don't know. I really don't. And like I said, I just really want to find another striker. I do. I think if we could find a striker that could play number 10, 
it would be ideal. But if not, I would prefer the striker because Sungjins can play as a number 10 behind Chavi as well. Uh, I know it says Hay is there, but Hay is not going to be playing as a number 10 for us. He's going to be in that midfield where he was last year. Hay is going to be everywhere on this pitch according to this thing. So uh, kind of tough. We'll figure it out as we go. But uh, as I mentioned, I feel like this guy right here could play as a uh, as a third choice pressing forward. For I really do. I know he's I know his, his his star rating isn't there yet, but he hasn't played a ton. He hasn't played a lot in his career at all. So it's going to be a huge step up in competition for that young fella. Well, the season is upon us. So tomorrow's episode, I believe, I believe today's Monday for you guys. Obviously, you guys know I'm bulk recording, so I may be a little bit wrong on the days. Tomorrow's episode, the season gets underway, our first season here at the Eredivisie, and I don't know if we have enough to stay up. Uh, there's been some changes in the odds in the season preview. I know we've been keeping a check of this. Dropped down to the 17th. So, yeah, Almer City has skyrocketed. They're looking pretty good, apparently. Uh, so, we've got some work to do. I think I think we can stay in this 15th, 16th range for this season. Uh, we have brought in one more player, and that would be Mr. Daniels. This was a record signing for us, 45K. You know, we spent a lot of money on Mr. Daniels. Uh, he's a two-and-a-half-star player, five-star potential striking option. As I mentioned, we needed to bring in another striker. He's not exactly what we was looking for, but at that price tag, that current ability and that potential ability, I could not skip out on this player. So that is why he has joined the club. He looks decent. He's he's pretty good in the air, uh, 16 <laughs> jumping reach, heading of 13. So he's more of a target forward that can be his poacher as well. So... Uh, I think he's going to help out a lot in the attack this season. It kind of lets that other guy that we brought in, the Van Erden, what's his name? Vander Hayden play on that right-hand side where he's a little bit more comfortable. So I'm I'm excited about what we've done here this season. I think we've got some potential. That being said, we've got some injuries already knocking around. Velenos is out for five to nine days. Winsink, he's going to miss the start of the season. Three weeks out. Lucho is missing the start of the season. He's out for two more days which means it's time that we go ahead and pick our starting 11 for the first match. It's something that we like to do or something that I've started doing on this season or started doing this FM 22. So uh, let's, let's go ahead and do it. We're going to go ahead and do, just do a quick pick, see what it says and see what we want to do. See what we want to change. Uh, I don't know our players really yet. I want to play ever ink. Ever ink I think is going to be a key player for us this season. I would prefer Chavi playing up top than having, what's his name? Where's Baker? Baker in the midfield. So something like that right off the bat we're wanting to do. Uh, Dion Malone in the starting lineup as a center back for us. Uh, guys, if he, was, if he was ready to go, I think I would give Van or Mendez Delgado the start in this match just because he's been training fan-freaking-tastic. I do want to bring him on the bench. Is there somebody we want to take off? We'll take off Maria. He's not really a key player for us, is he? Uh, let, I would prefer to do this, and then that guy that we brought in. I'm just going to call him Tom, because there's no way in hell I'm going to pronounce that name. Uh, Tom on that left-hand side as a winger. Uh, I think that'll work out for us. We're going to have Bournemouth playing up top, like we expected. Rooten instead, and Hartman's going to be playing there. I think that's going to be our starting 11 for the first match of the season. And it's going to be a tough one. As I mentioned, we got Alkmaar up first. I don't know if we have enough to stay up. I think, like I said, I think we can finish between 15th and 16th, go to the playoffs and, and stay up that way. Um, obviously, our, tr our transfer restrictions really struggled this offseason uh, because our scouting range is still not massive. And we've already we don't have a great scouting budget, so yeah, that's what we've been doing. It's I think we're ready though. I, I do think we're ready for the first match. As I mentioned, Altmar up first, and it's a home matchup. It'd be nice to get off to a good start, get a draw out of this match. And then we got some winnable matches coming up after that, and hopefully, just hopefully, we get a couple three points out of some of these matchups. But let me know down in the comments, who do you think our best signing this season was? Uh, we'll do a little bit of a quick recap on the guys that we brought in, just so we got we know. So I think we would start right here with Tom. 
Tom, the three-star player, five-star potential left-wing player that we brought in. Uh, the backup goal keep, that's a two-and-a-half-star player, three-and-a-half-star potential. Then we got Mr. Hartman, the left back, that's a two-and-a-half-star player, five-star potential. I like Tom so far out of that group. Uh, then these guys, I really like Everink. I think Everink's going to be a good player for us. The three-star player, five-star potential. Uh, Van Dyke, the two-and-a-half-star, four-star potential center back option. Uh, Markello, the two-and-a-half-star, four-and-a-half-star right back that we have. Uh, Van Der Erden, this is a guy that I am actually really intrigued with. I want to see what he can do for us in the future. Uh, a two-and-a-half-star player, five-star potential. We brought in a lot of potential good players. Uh, the the Loney that we brought in, Luchik, a three-star player, five-star potential, number 10. And then Daniels, who we brought in for a, a huge amount of money on 45000 for He's a two-and-a-half-star player, five-star potential striking option. I still think I would probably lean Everink, but I think the most intriguing player to me is Van der Herden. Van der Heiden, Van der Heiden. I don't know how you say his name. I do apologize. But yeah, let me know down in the comments who you like the best out of this squad. And I can't wait to play the first match. Well, that was a difficult transfer window, but I think we've done some good business. Obviously, I'm not 100% sure if we've done enough to stay up. But nevertheless, I think it's been good business that we've done. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notification bell, leave a comment down below. And as always, my dudes, thank you for watching.